welcome everyone to this keynote session. We are very grateful to our sponsors who make this conference possible. Before today's keynote by Jerome Ohms, we have a five minute presentation by Roche, our sponsor of the day. Hello, my name is Joe Federer and I work as a data scientist at Roche. And I'm happy to talk to you about how we leverage interactivity in our clinical trial work. It's actually exciting times to work as a R developer at Rush because we start to use R more and more across our whole content delivery process, starting with exploratory data analysis for basic research, diagnostics, clinical trials, uh, including predictive modeling or also doing some exploratory data analysis to see which particular subgroups of patients could benefit more from a treatment. But more and more, we're also using R to actually produce validated outputs that go to regulatory entities within validated R environments. And we actively pursuing a goal of being able in the future to ship interactive solutions, apps, together with static outputs to the regulatory authorities to actually streamline the process of evaluating or also approving a drug or a treatment. I'm here today to show you an example of one of these apps as we use them. This particular one we used throughout a couple of different COVID-19 studies that we had running or which are still running. Um, we use a shiny solution powered by an internal framework, which we call Nest, which features some nice, um, some nice aspects, so especially it's totally modularizable. Uh, it's quite data agnostic, so you can use like an app scaffold and just swap out the data from different studies. It features some really nice live filtering, and this allows for some flexible exploratory data analysis with these reusable modules for plots and tables, also efficacy outputs. It's all parameterizable via templates. So these templates take care of updating the inputs and setting the correct filters, which helps a lot with reproducibility. And once you have like the outputs you desire, you can create a quick report, which is just HTML based, editable and flexible, styleable with CSS. I show you uh, a quick video of an example app uh, using some dummy data. Um, this is the typical scaffold, as you would see it, with uh, some different tabs having different modules, so one for a table, one for a line plot, box plots, but also efficacy outputs like your kaplan meyer curves, your time to event analysis. Um, it features this filtering panel on the right hand side, so you can filter the different data sets that are generated for clinical trials with this and different types of data, lab data, patient level data. And via drop down menus, you can select which variable you want to filter it and then interactively set the filters you want to use. And on the left hand side, you have this template drop down menu, which is pre-populated, studied specifically with some templates that you might want to use, but you can also add your own templates or rather one that has been generated by somebody else and just copy paste it, apply it and it will automatically update the filters and set the correct inputs. Once you hit the run button, it will generate the output that you pre-specified now. So in this example, a line plot. And one particularity is actually that every time you hit the run button, it will create you a new output in these new cards. So you can generate multiple outputs and compare them side by side. Also in this example, it gives you an additional table with some descriptive statistics. And once you have the desired output, you can star it and favorite it because you want to keep it and discharge the ones that you actually don't want. Then you can also move to another tab, for example, here a table uh, module and you can create whatever table you want. Uh, you also give it a star. You switch over to the reporting uh, module where you can add your favorites to the report. So we pull all of these favorited start outputs into this one module, where you then can update uh, titles or add some notes. 
and also arrange a little bit the order how you want your report to be generated and then click on open report and it will render you a report in html which is still editable so you can still change your notes or change your titles and this one can then be saved as a pdf for sharing all of these modules and these reports also they record necessary information for example what filters have been set uh, what inputs or what methods have been used so you can really have some kind of reproducibility or at least like it's well documented what you have done this is it so far for a quick glimpse of how we use R at Roche. Um, I thank you very much for your attention and wish you a good rest of the conference. Have a good day, thank you. So we thank Roche for um, uh, sharing that presentation with us to share a little bit of how they're using R. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, um, Jerome Ohms. Jerome is a re researcher and software developer with R Open Sci at the University of California, Berkeley. He has written many CRAN packages and also maintains the compilers and build infrastructure for R on Windows. Today, he's going to talk to us about the R Universe project. During his talk, please post messages on the KeyOM Slack channel, that's hashtag key underscore OOMS, or ask and vote on questions via the Zoom Q&A. Over to you, Jerome. All right, thank you so much for having me. Um, so this talk will be about uh, the R Universe project, which is a uh, big new ambitious project by R OpenSci, uh, which I've been working on for the past um, year or longer. Uh, so um, in this talk, I will uh, discuss some of the different components and use cases for R Universe. Uh, but if you're going to take away one thing from this talk, it should be that our universe is for everyone. It is a place for publishing research and research software. Uh, it can be used by individuals and organizations. Uh, it's beneficial to novice R users, to students, researchers, or professional package developers. Uh, there's no gatekeeping in our universe. Uh, if you have some R code or R markdown article that you think is worth sharing, uh, regardless of what it is, you can sign up and start doing that today, uh, no matter your background or expertise. All right, so a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Jeroen. I'm a staff research engineer uh, and the lead infrastructure for R OpenSci. Uh, if you don't know R OpenSci, uh, we are a research group based at UC Berkeley doing all sorts of things related to uh, open science with R. And if you want to learn more about our group, uh, you should really check out the talk by Stephanie Butland earlier this week who gives a great overview of our mission and the various activities of R OpenSci. And as part of what my work with R OpenSci, uh, I've written quite a few CRAM packages. Uh, most of these packages interface to interesting C and C++ libraries, which expose functionality to R that can be useful for uh, researchers. Uh, for example, packages providing interfaces to HTTP clients or cryptography or database drivers or image processing uh, and so on. And finally, uh, as Heather already mentioned, I'm currently also the maintainer of the official installers and tool chains and system libraries uh, for R on Windows. So, in this role of Windows maintainer, uh, I spent quite some time in the past few years trying to modernize the infrastructure to build R and the compilers and the system libraries needed by R packages, um, collectively known as uh, R tools. And so this process is now uh, entirely automated and transparent and reproducible uh, such that everyone, everyone can uh, see how this works and get involved. And at the same time, I really tried to redesign R tools to reduce the friction for Windows users to develop R packages uh, on their machines. So these days, if you install R tools for and R things should generally just work, which wasn't always the case. And if you're interested in this work, you should check out the R Windows organization uh, on GitHub. So that was briefly a bit of background about me. Um, let's talk about uh, our universe. So what is our universe? 
Uh, our universe is sort of an umbrella project under which we are experimenting with many ideas that we have developed at our OpenSci in the past years to take open science with R to the next level. Uh, and in essence, uh, our universe is an open platform for publishing and discovering research and research software written in R. And the platform has many features and, and different components. Um, but the core is that in our universe, everybody, um, every user or organization has a personal cran like package repository, uh, which is backed by a modern build system uh, and also allows you to uh, publish uh, articles and other uh, R-based content. And on top of that, our universe has extensive dashboards and feeds and APIs and metrics and so on to make all of this content uh, more openly available and accessible and uh, discoverable. Right, so how does it work? Uh, in a nutshell, uh, so in our universe, every user or organization has a unique subdomain under ouruniverse.dev uh, for publishing their content. And this subdomain is mapped to your GitHub account. Uh, so it can either be an individual account or a team account uh, from, uh, from GitHub. Uh, so for example, uh, I publish my personal content under yeroom.roopensci.dev and uh, things that I develop as part of roopensci go under roopensci.ouniverse.dev. And so on this uh, subdomain for every user, you can find a cran like repository uh, with R packages owned by this user or organization. Uh, so, and these, uh, this repository automatically includes binaries for Windows uh, and Mac OS and some of the other things that you expect from a cran like repository. So it works, installing from this repository works for users exactly the same as when they would be installing a package uh, from CRAM. And uh, you can also find uh, our markdown articles published by this user organization and a lot of uh, metadata, which I will show later on. Um, and if you open this domain in the browser, you get a, a dashboard for visually browsing and exploring uh, the content uh, in this universe, you know, the packages and the articles. Uh, but all of the data is also available programmatically using HTTP APIs. Uh, and uh, again, as I uh, already said, everything is fully automated. Right, so that may, might sound like a lot. So let's just uh, look at an example. So here is the GGSEC universe. Uh, GGSEC is a suite of R packages that is developed by a research group at the University of Oslo uh, for brain and cognition research. Uh, most packages here are maintained by Athanasia Mowinkel, um, and currently uh, we see that there is uh, 14 packages in the universe, uh, and one of these packages is on CRAM, and the others uh, are not. So again, um, the owner of this universe is the GGSEC GitHub account, which is a organization account, and hence the URL of the universe is ggsec.runiverse.dev. Uh, and through this uh, GitHub account, we can also um, show some information about this user. So that's what you see on the right. Uh, it is the, uh, the profile uh, picture and information from the GGSEC group that we uh, take from uh, GitHub. Well, the R Universe dashboard uh, that you uh, get when you browse, uh, when you go to the subdomain in the browser, has a few tabs uh, through which you can browse the uh, different sorts of content in the universe. So uh, I'll walk a little bit uh, through that. Uh, and by the way, as we develop this, maybe, and if you may be watching this thing in the future, there might be additional tabs or they may have different names, um, but you know, the ID uh, will remain the same. So first let's look at the, the, the most core thing, which are the packages. 
So the build tab is its first tab, and it shows an overview of recently updated packages in this universe, um, and that shows the the version and uh, the maintainer and the date of the most recent commit uh, to the package. Uh, and it also shows this green batch when the package is available uh, from CRAN. Um, and on top of that, uh, on, the, on the top of the page, we show some example code for users to explain how to install a package from this universe uh, in R. So users can directly copy paste that code into the R session and start using uh, these packages from, uh, from this uh, universe. Uh, so just like CRAN, we automatically build binaries for Windows and Mac OS for the current and previous release of R. So that is this column with uh, Windows and Mac OS icons uh, that shows if there is a um, binary package available for Windows and Mac, which in this case um, is true for each of the packages. Um, the color of this uh, icon shows if the package also uh, passes all of the CMD check um, uh, checks. So uh, if the icon is green, it means that um, a, uh, the, the package was successfully built and deployed, um, and it also passes uh, CMD check. And if the icon is gray, in this case, it means that the package was successfully built and deployed to our universe, but there was some uh, error or warning in CMD check. So it means that the users can still install this package, but maybe if you're the maintainer, you might want to look at you know, what's going on. Uh, so as said, the top of the page shows example code of how you could install packages from this universe. Um, so this is a CRAN-like repository, so it's simply using install.packages. Uh, the easiest way is by setting the repos argument in R to uh, both your universe and then also CRAN. So what happens with this code is that uh, the package and its dependencies will be installed from the, uh, the ggsec universe. Um, but for dependencies of the package that are not available from uh, ggsec, it will fall back uh, on CRAN. So note that, again, all of this is done using the base R package manager exactly as when the user would install from CRAN. Uh, and on Windows and Mac, uh, we have these binary packages. Uh, so the user does not need any complicated tools and libraries to uh, build these things from source. All right, so the second tab of the dashboard is called Packages. And this basically gives us an overview of the, of the content of the packages that are in the universe. Um, yeah, so this is just uh, mostly information that is taken from uh, description files and then some additional metadata that we collect when a package is deployed. Uh, so, for example, um, it includes the title and the description for all of the packages in the universe, uh, who is the maintainer and the recent, most recent commit. Um, so, this is like a, cool, uh, like a place where you can uh, quickly browse like what is available uh, from this universe and, and, and what it is. Um, and if the package has a logo, this is also shown here in this dashboard. So, there is a few standard places where you can include the logo into your package and we use the same rules as package down to find the logo. So if the logo works for package down, it will show up here um, as well. So um, yeah, so this tab shows you some of the uh, information uh, from our database that we have for packages, but there's really much more available through the APIs. So this is basically just the uh, the core stuff that, that's, that's uh, interesting to, to visually inspect. But as I will show later, um, so this dashboard actually calls to exactly the same API that's also uh, public, uh, so we, we don't cheat. Uh, and uh, you can look at these APIs to extract many more pieces of information from the packages that are deployed uh, in the universe. 
All right, so that was everything about packages. Uh, let's talk a little bit about articles. And uh, so besides uh, publishing uh, packages, our universe is specifically intended as a place for publishing articles. Um, and this is really articles in the broad sense. These can be vignettes with documentation, but they may also be research or like, um, you know, tutorial or, or anything that you think is worth sharing. Um, yeah, so if you go to this third tab, you can see a list of all of the articles uh, that are available for this user or uh, organization. Um, and they are listed here. And these are automatically rendered uh, using the uh, vignette system in R. So the idea is that you um, you include these articles into an R package um, and then they automatically uh, get built and rendered and, and, and shown here uh, in the dashboard. Uh, however, articles don't have to be limited to software documentation. So I will emphasize it a bit later on, but really you can publish any sorts of content in your R Markdown article. So it can be a research paper or a tutorial or or a homework assignment. Um, yeah, so whatever you uh, you want to publish uh, into your universe. So um, you can easily browse these articles within the dashboard by, by clicking on them um, from the list that I just shown. And this will, um, this will uh, show the article within the context uh, of this, um, of this dashboard. So it's easy to sort of browse through the different articles in the universe or maybe across different uh, universe, universes. Uh, and we, uh, all of these articles are rendered in a consistent uh, HTML theme. And that is the same across all universes. So hopefully that makes it more pleasant uh, to browse uh, rather than you know, when all of these are using their own theme um, as you see uh, on CRAN. Um, yeah, so you can browse these articles from within the dashboard, but the top of the uh, articles also show direct links uh, to the input markdown file uh, and the output file. Uh, so you can, uh, you can link to these resources directly uh, if you just want to share the HTML or the art markdown um, without uh, you know, without uh, people having to go to the to the dashboard. All right, API access. So an important feature of our universe is also that we provide programmatic access to all of the content and uh, the metadata uh, that is in the system. Uh, so I, th I think this is an important part of open science that content is not you know locked away in some platform, but you know made accessible and available in um, as many generic ways as possible. Um, so all of the information that I've shown so far in the dashboard, you can retrieve that through APIs, and you can even retrieve much more information and also sort of aggregate statistics and other sort of. Uh, meta information about the repository and the system through our APIs. Um, so um, the API tab uh, shows a few of these uh, example endpoints that you can uh, explore if you um, if you think that's interesting. Um, so this part is still a bit under development, uh, although the the endpoints that I've documented here are are pretty stable. Um, so you can uh, yeah you can um, play with this in your browser or in R. Uh, so for example, uh, the Dash Packages endpoint uh, in this slide provides all of the information and all of the data that we have for a given version of a given package. So in this URL, Dash, dash Packages dash, uh, slash ggsec slash and then the version number, it lists all of the artifacts and the data that we have for this version of this package. Uh, so in this case, it's listing, uh, it would list uh, probably a list with uh, five uh, artifacts into a JSON list, which is one source package uh, and two binary packages for Windows and two binary packages for Mac OS. 
And then this, uh, this uh, API call shows all of the data that we have uh, about these um, files, about these uh, package artifacts. And of course, you can also read all of this uh, in R or you know, any other um, language or platform that understands HTTP um, or JSON. Um, so I'll leave it up to you to run this code. And one thing to note is that many endpoints in our universe use the NDJSON format, which is a streaming version of JSON, um, which is uh, needed for uh, to optimize performance. Uh, and therefore, if you use, if you want to read these uh, aggregate endpoints in R, mostly under dash stats, you need to use the stream in function uh, in JSON Lite or the equivalent function to read in the JSON format uh, from your favorite JSON library. Right. So that was sort of a, a very uh, brief tour uh, of what we have so far. Um, so let's take one step back. Um, so for who is our universe intended? It's like, why, why are we building this? So I think there are many different use cases of having a uh, personal art publishing space for your, uh, your personal work or your organization uh, or research group. Um, so the system is built around the concept of packages, of course, as the central container and deployment format, uh, but it's certainly not only for professional or package developers. Um, so in your universe, you can publish whatever you want. There's no policy, there's no policing of what is allowed or not, and there's certainly no archiving happening uh, without your uh, approval. Uh, so yes, I'll show in a bit. You can you can use it to publish uh, dev versions of CRAM packages for sure, um, but you can also think about publishing you know more experimental projects or research material or or even homework assignments. So let's have a look at some example of examples of the early adopters of uses and organizations uh, that are currently using uh, this system. Uh, so one. One example is that you can uh, simply use it as sort of your personal package portfolio. So suppose you've written a bunch of R packages, uh, some of which may be on CRAN or they may be in various places uh, on Git, uh, and you can set up a universe to showcase all of your work. Uh, it will sort of uh, show everyone like things you've developed and you know if they're in good state and you know what you're currently working on and so on. Um, and also, for example, if you publish articles, you can use it to have sort of a, a collection of, of things you've written uh, about um, R or your research. Another use case is to use a universe as an outlet for your research group. So here's an example of a research group based at the uh, Imperial College in London, uh, and they develop a suite of packages that is mostly maintained by Rich Fitzjohn. Um, and many of these packages may not be suitable for CRAN or, you know, it's just too much of a pain to release it all on CRAN. Um, so the, they release all of their source code uh, on GitHub. Um, but by creating a universe, you can sort of increase the exposure to the work and sort of um, make, make it more accessible and discoverable for the users rather than when it's, you know, only available in source form somewhere uh, on a GitHub account uh, that people may not be aware of. Another use case for our universe is software curation. Um, so as you may know, the R Open Science organization maintains a large suite of peer-reviewed and staff-maintained R packages, uh, for which we try to keep, which we try to keep up to standard for use in scientific research. So this is actually where our universe uh, originates from, this ID. Um, uh, so through uh, the R Open Science uh, universe. Uh, it becomes easy to see for users which packages are available uh, and it's easy for them uh, to install uh, regardless of whether or not they are on CRAN or not at that point. Uh, but it also helps us as an organization, as a, as a monitoring tool. So from the, from the dashboard and the APIs, we can 
we, we, we uh, can keep an eye on the development activity uh, of, of the uh, packages that live in our organization and we can quickly spot packages that are you know failing tests or they don't seem to be actively maintained anymore and they uh, might require our attention Uh, another use case of our universe is simply to publish the development versions of grant packages. Uh, so sometimes users, they may want to test a version of a package that is not yet on CRAN uh, to test some new feature or a bug fix. Um, installing packages from source from GitHub sometimes can be quite painful because many of these packages from our lib, for example, they contain C++ codes or they require system libraries uh, and so on. Uh, so by creating a universe for this, everything gets automatically built and uh, it's e very easy for users to install the development version of the package. It's just as easy as they would install the grand version uh, of that package without uh, requiring any special tools uh, or knowledge. Um, yeah. And finally, another uh, example uh, of a use case is for organizations that uh, are developing uh, an interdependent set of R packages in a given uh, domain, such as, for example, here, the R spatial organization uh, who develop uh, a, a set of R packages that are all related to uh, geospatial analysis. Uh, so if in the universe you can in the universe you can quickly see what they're currently working on uh, and try the latest versions of these packages um, and a benefit for the developers of these packages is that these packages uh, automatically get built and tested against uh, the other versions of the packages in the universe so these are uh, the other dev versions of the packages in the universe so if one of the uh, maintainers of these packages makes a change uh, that uh, unknowingly breaks some of the other packages that depend on that, uh, it quickly becomes apparent uh, in, this, in this dashboard um, because the other packages are built and checked against the version of, this, uh, of the dependencies that are in this same universe. Uh, so uh, you can quickly see if the, uh, if the package that uh, is being developed is passing uh, is not is passing checks uh, in the content of the of the you know the the current development versions uh, of its dependencies uh, without having to do a manual uh, ref depth check uh, before the CRAN release and then you know figuring out that you broke something a long time ago and you know having to go back. So these are just some of the examples. Uh, there's many more examples. We have about 300 universes right now. Uh, you can browse our webpage uh, to see some of the cool stuff uh, was in there. Um, but I want to highlight one more use case, which I'm personally most excited about um, that we haven't seen much yet. Um, so we are used to think of our packages mostly for sharing reusable code. I mean, that is what CRAN is for. It's to share uh, software that is useful for other people. Um, but um, many researchers have argued that an R package is actually a fantastic generic container format for research material. Uh, R packages provide standard format for bundling code and data and articles, you know, and metadata such as the author and license and dependencies and so on. Um, so um, you could think that, for example, you know, if you have a publication or a homework assignment, which consists of a uh, R markdown article or a SWE file, um, and then you know you have some supporting code and data, um, and you can uh, you have that in a uh, set up in a in a reproducible project or something. Um, from here, it's actually a small step to put it into an R package. Uh, and publish that into your personal universe so that you get a live automatically rendered version of that paper or that uh, assignment um, on your um, on your our universe um, so um, yeah this this idea has been uh, raised in the past uh, by various people but it never took off and I think because well 
you know, sure, you could put your research into a part package, you know, but then what? I mean, it's, it's kind of going grand because it's not software. So, you know, what are you accomplishing? But I, I hope that maybe now, if you have your personal grand like repositories and your vignettes are sort of beautifully rendered, um, this ID uh, can take off and, and, and um, uh, people can, um, it really it becomes really rewarding to um, turn your your research paper into an R package that is entirely fully uh, reproducible and automatic, such that uh, the uh, the vignette uh, contains your uh, your paper or your uh, your article, and it uh, through uh, the supporting code in the package and the um, uh, um, the, and the data in the package and uh, the, the dependencies that are declared in your package file. Um, we have this, this place of publishing like fully automated reproducible research. All right. So that was an overview of different use cases that we uh, envision. Um, so um, yeah, so far we've mostly looked at single uh, universes, um, but um, we want visitors of the website to be able to quickly discover and browse content from uh, uh, from you know various universes. So one way is through these global feeds. So if you go through the R Universe homepage, uh, we show uh, a global feed of all package commits across all universes. Uh, so that's fun to look at, uh, to sort of see uh, what uh, people are working on uh, across, you know, the entire R ecosystem. Uh, similarly, we have a feed for articles, um, so you can see which articles have recently uh, been created or updated across the entire ecosystem. So this actually very this actually works very well. It's very cool. I've discovered several cool new R packages and and new features just by looking at you know what what people are uh, writing in in their um, uh, in their uh, in their articles. And finally, there's a uh, a maintainer view on the website, which uh, shows an aggregate um, of all the the people. So the the yeah the the uh, maintainers uh, of these uh, packages. Um, across all of the different uh, universes. So, for example, if you hover on a certain uh, name of a um, author, you may see that um, this author has published or maintaining packages in several universes, and then you sort of may uh, cross uh, cross link and you click on that and sort of see the different groups that they're working on and different projects. All right, so maybe by now you're curious, how do I set up my own universe? Uh, I promise it's very simple. Uh, I will briefly show how it works in the upcoming minutes, but the best reference for this is a tech note that we wrote recently on the R OpenSight blog, which you can check out on ropensight.org. Um, but basically the way it works is all we need from you is a registry file, which is a file called packages.json. Uh, and it lists the packages that you want to include in your universe. It has to list uh, the name of the package and uh, uh, the URL, the Git URL from where we can uh, Git clone that package. And the only requirement is that this URL is a public Git URL. So from here, our build servers will literally Git clone uh, and that URL. Uh, and that's basically everything you need to provide. Um, so you need to uh, publish that in a repository called universe in the in the github user or organization for which you want to create a universe for example here uh, is the one by uh, mahel um, and then the next step is to activate this by installing the github app on your uh, on your account for which you want to create the universe and the github app needs very few permissions uh, it basically only asks for writing commit status updates which means that the system is able to post like a commit status, which is like the green check mark or the red cross behind your commit uh, on, the, uh, on the R package repositories, uh, as we will see in a second. So once you've done this, what happens next is that the system automatically creates a mono repo for you. Um, again, there's a, another blog post which extensively describes this process, so you don't have to remember it. 
Um, but basically, the mono repo is a Git repository in which each of your packages is a submodule. Uh, and this is basically the canonical source for your universe. And it, it allows us to see currently, but also have a full history of what was in your universe at any given point in time. And then if you go to the actions tab uh, of this uh, mono repo uh, on GitHub, which is, by the way, all of the mono repos are under r dash universe slash in the name of your uh, account uh, and there you can see uh, where all the building happens so if something is not working or you're just curious you can uh, you can check that out and then uh, once you've set it up after a while usually no more than an hour uh, packages that have a uh, complete building will start appearing uh, on your dashboard and then if you um if you gave it permission if you gave the GitHub app permission to, uh, to write commit statuses, as I uh, said earlier, then every time a package is successfully deployed on your R universe, uh, it becomes visible in the, in the R package repository, as you see here, as a commit status. So that is a, uh, yeah, as, a, as a link here uh, with a green check mark. So that means that this commit for this package was successfully deployed onto our universe. All right, so this is basically the current state. So this is what we have right now. Uh, we have just started this uh, and we really want to build it out. Uh, we have many ideas uh, for features we want to have. Uh, but one thing uh, that, I, uh, that we are working on and that I want to um, highlight is that we want to integrate various metrics about packages there may be good indicators about the quality and the health and the impact of uh, research projects. So if you want to understand the motivation behind this better, you can watch the recording from my talk at our studio con from earlier this year. The link is also on our, uh, on our homepage. Uh, and in the talk, I try to explain why we believe it is important for you know, organizations and potential users of software uh, to get a sense of the health and the, and the quality of the software uh, that they build on. Uh, and in this talk, I, I, um, I talk a bit about various types of indicators that you know, I, I think that you could look at for uh, an open source project. Uh, and here I distinguish uh, technical uh, and social and uh, scientific indicators that may, uh, may say something about uh, uh, the health and the role and the impact of a, uh, of a project. Um, so we want to integrate uh, such indicators with our universe such that the dashboard and the API uh, show some information about these software and research projects that gives you a sense if the product is still active and how it is maintained, you know, and if it is used by other researchers and so on. You know, so for example, uh, some low hanging fruit, we want to uh, show something about the, the download statistics and the reverse dependencies of, of uh, packages that are obviously a, uh, a uh, indicator of how much something is used. And particularly, uh, for example, if we, if we look uh, at these numbers over time, you may get a sense about the life cycle of the package, if this is something that's sort of up and coming or on its way out or sort of uh, an established package into the ecosystem. Uh, but a much more challenging and, and important aspect of this project is to find uses and citations of research software in scientific code and publications. And we think this is very important uh, for research software to be able to say, like, where is this uh, software used in, you know, in actual scientific research. Uh, so for this, we are collaborating with a team uh, of experts to build machine learning models to recognize software mentions in, uh, in the literature. And they are now running experiments to look at the citations from like a large corpus of 20 or 30 million open access articles um, and try to extract citations automatically uh, especially for software that um, we haven't seen before. Uh, so we hope to uh, announce some interesting progress in this uh, area later this year. 
All right, so that was most of what I had to say. Um, small recap. Uh, so what is our universe and why is it useful? So it's an open platform for publishing research uh, and research software and uh, other R-based content. Um, the system automatically tracks uh, your Git repositories and then uh, builds the binaries and, uh, and the articles and so on. Uh, users can easily install these things just like they uh, can from CRAN. There's no um, complex tools no needed like R tools or remotes or so on. Um, it, installation for users is just like as they would install from CRAN. Uh, and then you know the dashboards they show um, uh, the, the R packages and the articles that you have uh, published. And they can even work when the, when the actual source content is spread across different GitHub organizations or even different Git servers. Um, also, our universe can be used as a zero configuration continuous integration system. Uh, so as I showed, um, if, you, um, if you give the app permission, it will show this check mark when the package was successfully deployed. So if you want to have a continuous integration, or actually it's, it's continuous deployment in this case, um, for your R packages, um, you can just install that app and there's no other maintenance or configuration on your site and it will just run so sort of the standard um, checks on a different platform uh, so you can quickly spot if there's uh, if there's an issue um, and yeah our universe is very easy to set up uh, we've tried to um, deal with all of the uh, all of the challenges and uh, solve that on our server side um, so really what you need is just provide a list of the git repositories that you want to include um, so we hope that it sort of becomes a space where you can um, uh, publish your uh, your content uh, your packages and your articles and uh, maybe other things later um, that is both uh, these packages can also both be on github or they can also be on cran uh, it doesn't have to be uh, exclusive um, and again i want to emphasize our universe is can be used by anyone, uh, whether you are uh, just starting to use R uh, or you are a, a veteran package developer, um, you can set up your own universe and um, start uh, publishing your, uh, your work. So some references, if you want to learn more, um, I recommend you check out our website from R Open Sci, uh, where we have a, um, a landing page for the project. Um, and in particular, uh, so documentation for our universe is a little bit sparse right now, but the best references are a few tech notes that we published on the blog. Um, so for example, uh, we have a post that is uh, entirely dedicated to explaining uh, how the build system works. Um, and one in which I uh, have explained uh, the idea of uh, publishing articles based on the vignette system and also this idea of, you know, what if we could use this system not just to publish um, software documentation, but actually to start publish like research compendia and other research material uh, that would not be suitable on CRAN, but, you know, definitely fits into an R package. Um, and then there is the um, most recent blog post in which I detail uh, uh, how you go about setting up your own uh, R universe and some of the tricks if you want more uh, fine control. Uh, yeah, that was everything I uh, had to say. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much, Ryan. Um, yeah, so we've got 10 minutes for questions and we have lots of questions uh, on the Q&A and also on the Slack. Um, so we probably won't be able to get to them all, but we'll, we'll see what we can do now. Um, so to start with, uh, how do you guard against malware and so on in, in our universe? Uh, we don't. So the idea is that is your personal publishing space. Um, so um, I expect that users will um, uh, install, so they will, if they install something from a particular um, uh, universe, just as 
if they would install software directly from GitHub using installed with Git, GitHub or something that you uh, you think about or right, from that you install that from um, source that you trust and um, yeah so in in a sense it is and that's it is similar to when users would install from GitHub is that uh, you need to trust the source um, uh, of uh, the you know the author or the organization from where you are installing this from. Okay. Does our universe build uh, Mac OS binary packages the same way CRAN does? Uh, in other words, can we use our universe like a wind builder to predict CRAN's success of building binaries for Mac OS? Um, mostly, yes. I mean, CRAN is not, um, it's, 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 un, uh, it's unclear exactly how CRAN builds things because their uh, build platform is it's not entirely open. Um, so, but in most cases, I would say if the package builds on our universe, the it will probably work on CRAN, uh, vice versa. But you know, it's it's impossible to exactly replicate the configuration of the Mac build server because we are building everything in public CI servers uh, on GitHub. So, you know, obviously, we don't know uh, all of the all of the custom settings. Uh, and, and tweaks that they may have, uh, that CRAN may have configured on their build server. Okay, makes sense. Perhaps while we're on building, are there plans to also build Linux binaries in the future, e.g. for selected distributions similar to RSPM? Um, maybe, but not right now, because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty uh, resource intensive to orchestrate that, and of course, our studio is doing that um, for their um, uh, for CRAN, and they have they have a lot of resources to be able to build these um, these binaries. But you know, it's very expensive because if you want to build Linux binaries, you need to build separate binaries for every version of R across for every different version of every different operating system. So you literally need a binary for R 4.0 for Ubuntu 20, and then another binary for our form for you know ubuntu 80 and so forth and then mm. so it's it's like a, you need like you need to build a lot of things um so you know for now that is uh out of scope um and it doesn't weigh up to um yeah to the to the price that that would cost us to provide these things and which version on github gets built is it the latest commit on master you can specify that. So this is detailed in the blog post about how to set up your own universe. By default, it will be uh, it will be tracking the the head branch, which is the default uh, Git branch, which is you know either master or main. Um, but you can specify in your registry file uh, if you want which branch you want to track. So for example, if you have a special stable branch where you um, uh, where you only commit things that uh, that are uh, that you want to share that, that are considered stable in your registry file, you can uh, you can track that. And there's even a, a special value that you can enter in your branch called uh, star release, which is a syntax that we've taken from uh, remotes. And if you track that, it will automatically track the latest GitHub release of the package. So in GitHub, you can tag releases of your package. Uh, and if you do, if you specify in your registry file you want to um, track the uh, the star release branch then we know that at any point we look like what is the latest uh, git tag what is the latest tag release on github mm -hmm. and that's what will be deployed in your universe so it's really the control is is uh, for the at the user and can we build something like this on on private clouds or, or does it require github it does not require GitHub, but private uh, is pretty complicated. Um, so um, I've also written about this in the last uh, tech note. Uh, the R packages, the, the source code of the packages, they may be hosted on any Git server. So they may be hosted on GitHub, but they may also be hosted on GitLab, or they may be hosted on like a private Git server by your university. Uh, or your your institution. The only thing that matters is that we that is public and we can git clone um, the uh, from that URL the source code of your package. Um, 
yeah, uh, making this private is pretty complicated. And I don't think that we are very interested in that right now because we are about open science. And if we, if we would make this uh, private, it would add in like a layers of authentication and complexity at every level. You know, we would have to authenticate probably. We're pulling the source code and then I imagine you would well, expect users to authenticate if they want to install the package, which you know, I think ours install the packages doesn't even um, support authentication. So that is really not something uh, that we are at this point uh, investing in. Uh, if I install something from our universe, is the R package RM able to know that it's installed from there when I create a snapshot? Yes. Um, the description file, as you install the, um, the package, um, of course, the description file, the package is installed, and that one contains uh, several fields, uh, which we stamp, uh, which our build server stamp into the description file, which shows you um, which universe repository, which universe repository uh, this package uh, was installed from, and it also shows you uh, for, for the package that's built, it shows you uh, the upstream URL of the R package, uh, so the Git URL of the package where you built from, and it shows you which branch that this package was installed from. So by default, there's master or main, but if you're mm -hmm. installing from something else, and it shows you the, the SHA hash of the of which version of the package was built. So if you look at the description file of the installed package, you will be able to uh, see exactly like which universe is coming from and also which exactly which commit to uh, to the R package that this package was built of. Okay. Uh, can a package be part of multiple universes? Yes, absolutely. And uh, that we see that happening a lot. Um, so the, the universe registry file, you just list the Git URLs um, from, uh, from the packages you want to include. And of course, different people may all include the same uh, package. You know, for example, if you have a, I may have a package of mine that's both part of our open sci and it's also part of my personal universe. Uh, that's fine. Uh, can our universe be used to share forks of, of Grand packages, say? Um, so that's, you can, but it's tricky. And so we specifically, um, of course, that's dangerous, right? So um, because, uh, I mean, you, of course, you can share a fork of a package and you can even share a completely different package with the same name. Uh, but of course, that is not something we would recommend because then if the user installs that, then it overrides the other package and maybe other packages on your system were depending on that package. Uh, so then things break. So in the dashboard, we will show um, for the, uh, in the dashboard, we will show um, uh, indicators like these batches on whether the package also exists on CRAN. And then um, if it is um, uh, the same source as the package from CRAN. So we will show actually a red flag if the package has the same name as a package that is on CRAN, but the URL does not match uh, what is what is shown on CRAN. And thereby, we try to show, you know, we try to warn users or also developers against like, watch out, because this package has the same name as a CRAN package, uh, but it may actually not be from the same source. Thanks so much for rattling through those questions. Uh, there's still a few more left and hopefully um, you'll be able to follow up with those afterwards uh, on Slack on uh, Key Ohm's channel. Uh, up next, we have a 15 minute break and uh, three parallel sessions after that. Statistics and bioinformatics are in production and statistical modeling and data analysis. So join us there. Thanks very much, everyone.